story time again. So today the story is Orca Song. And orcas are whales. There we go. So here we go. There are the, there are the whales. They're swimming in the ocean. A rosy sun settles over the sea. A dusk wind dances up the waves and the moon climbs out of the Olympic mountains. And eight orca whales come leaping up the Washington coast on the North Pacific Ocean. Stories are told that 50 million years ago ancestors of the orca walked up upon the land on all fours but they so loved the water they gave up their hands and legs to have fins and tail flukes and now orca is the greatest and most powerful hunter in all the oceans of the whole world they're beautiful aren't they And there is the leader of the pod, the bull orca. And by sending vibrating sounds through the water, he can locate and tell the nature of objects far beyond what he's able to see. And he finds a school of salmon circling within fishermen's nets. It is a familiar practice. The whole pod will slip into the nets to feed, then escape before the fishermen notice. Okay, and there is that one. And there are the orcas swimming towards the nets and the salmon there. Splashing and singing at the rear of the group, not at all like a hunter, is Orca the pup. Bull Orca suddenly turns the pod towards the nets and he and the herd speed to the noisy, splashing salmon. But just at that moment, turns the opposite way towards a juicy salmon nearby. And as Pup's great jaws open to snatch his catch, a storm of fishing boats close in on the whales and Bull Orca wheels around and the pod races for safety. Pup moves to join them, but he can't. His dorsal fin is caught in a sunken, abandoned cargo net. Look, he's stuck in the net. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There he is in the net. Oh no, poor little baby pup. Pup wriggles and squirms. He bucks and thrashes and the net only gets tighter. And then he lies still, nearly out of breath and too weak to call out. Above him, the rumbling of the boats grows fainter as they move away. And Pup hears his mother calling him. He is only five and he has never been more than a hundred yards. A hundred metres from her side. But her voice, like the others, soon fades. Oh, poor pup. He's stuck. And he needs to get to the air to be able to breathe as well, doesn't he? He can't, he can't. He won't survive just under the water. 
and in the watery silence the sunlight begins to disappear. Pup must have air and he must join his family. He tries one last time to break through it free. The muscles along his back tighten, his four-foot tail flutes, strikes downwards, his sharp teeth cut sideways, and at last the net mesh snaps and his three-ton body rockets towards the surface. He's free! Yay! There he goes! Oh, pup, that is so lovely, isn't it? He's free to go up to the air and he'll be able to breathe. Air, night air rushes into his blowhole and his lungs fill like balloons. There we go. Whoa, there we are. But the fight has tired him and alone and exhausted Pup drifts half asleep through the lonely moonlit seas, closer and closer to land. Goodness. And from the shadowy hills nearby, ancient totem poles rise up to the stars. See? For centuries, the indigenous Native Americans along the western coast carved totems that celebrated Orca's brave hunting skills. But unseen by Pup, the totems slide by as the moon goes out of the sky. Dawn breaks and Pup awakes, feeling the sun's glowing heat on his back. Unaware, he had drifted towards the shore and became stuck in a shallow pool of water. The waves must have pushed him here in the night. And the outgoing tide left a sandbar between him and the sea where he belongs. And no whale can endure so much direct sun and the sun is still rising. Oh, pup, he's stuck, isn't he? He can't get back to sea. And the tide's out and he's on a sandbar and he can't get out to the sea. Oh, pup. And it's getting warmer too. Pup has grown to understand the meanings of many sounds in the sea, yet surrounding him now are very strange sounds. There we go, look. Someone has found him. Along his back, he feels many soft ticklings sensations, and suddenly he is being moved. Something is pushing him through the rising water of the incoming tide, pushing him back to the sea, back to the cold, back to life. There we go, look. He takes a grateful gulp of air. Oops. And dives down past the dark underwater caverns, down past the fluttering kelp beds. The cold water cools his body. He finds a school of her herring and races for it. But Pup is young and in inexperienced and all the fish hear him coming and scatter. Pup turns and dives, his sleek body towards the surface. He breaks out of the water in a sky-bound spiral. He lands with a tail-whopping splash that can be heard clear to the mountains of the Olympic Peninsula. He looks for signs, a fin, 
a fluke, any signs along the coast. And there he is, making as much noise as possible. And then, silhouetted against the sunset, Pup sees them, his family. Seven whales, his very own family. Oh. Rising out of the waves, coming for him. They have not left him. They've come back. Their songs of happiness race before them like ribbons of joy. And Orca the Pup is home again. Oh, that is so lovely, isn't it? Yeah, he's home again with his family. Way! Yay! And that's the end of that lovely story. And then we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. Bye bye for now.